All right. Well, our recording has started and I will officially welcome you to the Fung Fellowship info session focusing on transfer students. Um, welcome to Cal for those of you who are transferring into Berkeley and welcome as well to those who are transfer students who are in their senior year. Um, it is really wonderful to see so many of you and I'm really excited to really get to share the opportunity about the Funk Fellowship and also really get to spend time answering your questions. I've collected some questions from the RSVP sheet and some of the interest form as well. So I'll incorporate those into the presentation, um, but at any time, feel free to pop a question into the chat. Um, and I will first go ahead and introduce myself and the team here today, and then um, start sharing about the program. So here's our agenda here today. Um, we're gonna go through some of the basics. I'll start off with a brief intro, um, go into more detail about the program information, what it entails, um, provide some examples of the projects that um, past students have done within the fellowship and give you some insights of future projects that are on the horizon for the fellowship in the next academic year. And then really uh, get a chance to chat with you about the application, what's expected, what we're looking for, how much time it should take, and then really um, open it up into a Q&A. So first I'll start off and just introduce myself. Um, my name is Adrian Greer. I'm the assistant director for the Funk Fellowship. I've been with our team since we started off as a pilot in 2016. Um, my background is in public health. Um, my kind of UC journey um, began with my undergrad. Um, I went to UC Santa Barbara as a gaucho and was there really looking at psychology and Spanish. Um, at that time, I really became fascinated with health psychology, which eventually led me to my master's in public health at UCLA, um, continuing the UC journey and really looking at program planning and evaluation. Um, I was really fascinated by intergenerational health and really how to set up programs that were really agile to the changing world that we're in. Um, so after graduation, I worked within the, uh, the VA healthcare system, working in program innovation, as well as UC Davis Health, and eventually came here to Berkeley to be a part of the Fung Fellowship Program. Um, I'll say what really drives me and excites me about being here is really the students, um, being able to work with students from literally across campus, um, from many different both life experiences, academic experiences, and passions. Um, so I work closely with our teaching team who is in the classroom, as well as with students in their professional development in uh, their teaming as part of their projects and also successfully working with partners on real world projects that can be messy, but are impactful. And so really um, supporting students um, in their journey. Um, I'll also say we also have James Wang joining us as part of our marketing team um, within the Fung Institute. He is gonna be really answering your questions in chat, providing some links. So as I said before, feel free to put any questions you have in the chat and then we're gonna have a really open Q&A at the end um, as well. So getting into program information. So I always like to start off by sharing a bit about our history, where we came from. I think it explains where we are and why we're here now. Um, so our story really began in 2016. Um, it was really the brainchild of Coleman Fung, um, pictured here uh, with Pearl. Um, he is a Cal alum, an army veteran, entrepreneur, and much more. Uh, he really had a vision of creating an undergraduate opportunity to foster design thinkers, to solve real world problems, um, incorporating technology and interdisciplinary studies. Um, he's very passionate that real problems um, require interdisciplinary minds and we couldn't agree more. Um, so in 2016, we started off with a partnership between the College of Engineering and School of Public Health and really began as a pilot. Um, really designed for agility and poised for reiteration. Um, so initially when we started, we started off as a two-year model, all students committed to two years. Um, and based on student feedback, we evolved into the model we have today. 
So our model is what we call a one plus one um, in order to better support student experience. And I'm gonna go into much more detail of what that is in a moment. Um, and our most exciting big change that we had as of late is in 2020, we launched our conservation and technology track um, and partnered with the College of Natural Resources or Rosser College. And so with that, now we have our two tracks, one focused in public health, one focused in conservation. So going into our program model, our one plus one, um, all fellows who are admitted into the fellowship um, commit to one year with an opportunity to continue into a second year of the program. Um, again, if students are still on campus, now you can join as a senior. So this uh, that second year is open to those who are joining us as juniors. Um, during the first year, um, which I'll go into even more detail in a moment, um, fellows participate in a three unit course each semester, fall and spring, um, as well as lecture and lab for, for each of those. Um, and each of those has a series of design challenges, which we'll go into more detail as well. Um, these are design challenges are what we call projects, which also um, are the projects working with both industry and community partners. Um, we like to say the plus is the discovery aspect. We like to really support internships, professional development opportunities, um, during the summer, but also during the year. Opportunities for networking, for getting connected to leaders and people on the ground within the sector that you're interested and passionate in. And I'm really connecting you all to resources in order to make the type of impact that you wanna make. Um, and that second part of that one is our Honors Innovation Lab. So all fellows who complete the first year are eligible to apply to the second honors experience. And this is really focused on building on the skills and the foundation of that first year and diving even deeper into a year long partner or fellow led project. So first, starting off, what are the areas and topics even included within the Fung Fellowship? So um, what I like to say is we each have, we have these core pillars. And um, in addition to this, we also have the specific health content and conservation content, depending on which track of the fellowship you're a part of. So um, as you can see here, leadership, technology and design are really the core of the fellowship, no matter what track you're a part of. Um, we really believe in, um, in fostering leaders and with that takes a number of exposure to different, um, to different sectors, different topics, and also um, really has been evolving as our world has evolved as well. So again, under leadership, we touch on implicit bias. We do 360 evaluations with each of your teams, really focus on inclusive interdisciplinary teaming. Um, we like to say we really focus on emerging tech. And of course, what is emerging six years ago is no longer emerging today. So this is something that is continually changing and ways that technology is being used is also changing. So um, some of the technology that we've used in the past have been wearables. Um, we've dug into blockchain, um, explored 3D printing and also um, app development. Um, design is our last pillar here that I'll touch on, and that is really we use a human-centered design uh, framework for our design challenges, as well as how we look at these different challenges and problem spaces. Um, we have a big emphasis on storytelling um, and how you tell the story, not only of yourself, but also of your team, of the community that you're working alongside with, and why, um, why, why is this space important? Why should we all care? And really looking at how do you refine um, your story depending on who you're talking with. Um, we go into A-B testing and different types of prototyping. Um, again, this is just kind of scratching the surface, but those are some of the main, main areas that we, we hit as part of, part of the course and part of the experience. So here gives you a little more detail onto what's the distinction then? How are those brought into and, and 
And where is the distinction between the two tracks? So as I mentioned before, um, we have the health and technology track as well as the conservation. Um, within the health, we really look at that as a, with a public health lens, which is really broad. So it's really beyond the bi biomedical sense and looking at the health and well-being of populations. Um, so topics included in that could be social isolation, nutrition, housing, um, and education, much more. So again, more broad than just biomedical, physical health, but could also include that. Um, so in order to really look at these complex problems, we have to look at policy, social, economic, and environmental factors. Um, and we explore challenges in a number of spaces listed here, population health health equity, social determinants, social justice, and really diving into health disparities. Um, now within the conservation track, we really have a more of a biodiversity focus um, within conservation and environmental health. So topics could include land use, um, alternative livelihoods, public education, and much more. Um, similarly to the health um, track, when we're looking at these interdisciplinary challenges, we also need to look at many different factors, which include policy, social, economic, and environmental. And some of the primary threats that we really look at are land and sea use, um, exploitation of species, climate change, uh, pollution, pollution, and invasive non-native species. So digging a bit deeper into what does that first year of the experience look like? So many of you have asked on um, different questions of what is the commitment of the fellowship? So um, the commitment of the fellowship in terms of time, in terms of units is really dictated by the course as well as what you, what you put into it. So it's a three unit course each semester, which by Berkeley standards equates to nine hours of coursework each week. Um, so that nine hours includes your course time. So we have a two hour lecture as well as one hour lab each week. And the expectation is then on average, you'll spend about six hours outside of that course time working in your project teams, doing um, primary and secondary research, talking to users, innovating, prototyping, et cetera. Again, as any project-based course, it will fluctuate throughout the year, depending on where you're at in your journey, what, you know, also fluctuating with what the team needs are throughout, throughout those design challenges. Um, but in addition to that weekly course time, there's also um, a number of aspects that are also required and really enhance the fellowship experience. So one of those is, a fall boot camp. So the first weekend, it's August 28th and 29th. There um, is a two day boot camp where we'll really go through and give you the fundamental skills in order to be successful in the fellowship, as well as get you a chance to get to know one another. Um, then the community is one of the biggest aspects and one of the biggest takeaways I think that many folks have from the fellowship is the community they build, the connections they make. And um, we really dedicate time and energy to allowing space for you all to get to know one another and get to really um, build the skills together so then you can hit the ground running. Um, we do have a weekend retreat as well in the spring semester um, and as well as of course projects both in the short and the long term throughout the experience. Um, we like to say the experiential aspects. So these are all things that we offer throughout the fellowship. Not everyone's going to attend all of them, um, but you can pick and choose based on what you're looking to get out of this experience as well as your interests and availability. Um, into different conferences and company site visits, um, especially as we are able to, we really are supporting as we can meeting folks um, in those sectors, meeting the customers you're working with in person when, when, when possible, um, networking events, um, both within, um, within UC, but also outside of UC, um, workshops. So getting your hands dirty, being able to learn by doing um, in and dedicated spaces, hackathons and career services. Uh, we are very fortunate to um, be home within the Fung Institute, um, which is also home to um, a master's of engineering program. And so within that, we have access to um, amazing career services staff who are really 
knowledgeable and experts in how to write a great resume, how to make your LinkedIn as up-to-date and impactful as possible, how to do a behavioral interview, how to do a technical interview, um, what are the trends coming out, um, when should you be thinking about applying to internships or jobs, or if you have no idea what you want to do next, like make a session with them and talk about it, and they can kind of look at your expertise, kind of ask you some questions, and help provide some resources to, to move you along your, your journey as well. So we like to always share our main learning objectives uh, for the fellowship. It's very different than many other courses, um, but I really believe when we talk about preparing leaders for, for, for the real world, this is for us where we always come back to of how our learning objectives fit in to really driving our curriculum. So I'll just read through them briefly and then we'll get to the project. So one, engaging customer research that is empathetic, authentic and implementing diverse and robust sampling, allowing for feedback to influence project decision-making. Co-design is a huge piece of the fellowship, both within the program and within your innovation cycles and process. Um, we don't wanna be innovating anything in a bubble <laughs> um, and be thinking we're making the right thing and then pass it off to the people who are gonna be impacting it and have it be completely irrelevant or not be in the right format or not be well received. So I think that is a really key piece to, to what we teach and we do that within the program as well. Um, demonstrating a deeper understand, understanding of the potential that technology has to influence disciplines in substantive ways. As I said, technology, what is emerging is always changing and the ways we can use it is always changing. Um, so really being mindful of that as well. Identifying the challenges and opportunities associated with diversity, bias, and conflict within teams. Um, the fellowship over its history has had over 46 different majors, a part of the fellowship program. Um, that is one of the most diverse spaces in terms of academic experience on campus. Um, and coming to solve these challenges with folks who have very different perspectives, both again, within the academic realm, as well as within um, personal and professional realm um, may present some challenges, but ultimately presents opportunities to really tackle these types of challenges that we're looking, um, looking, um, looking to improve upon. Um, implementing work norms to support innovation with project teams and within project partners. Innovation is important and it's not also always easy, but finding ways to really do that and work it into norms. And then using storytelling to communicate effectively with diverse audiences and for diverse purposes. So here is um, a photo of our cohort last year. Um, on the upper left is our conservation cohort and the bottom right is our, is our health. Um, so this is from our midterms events last year um, held in Mud Hall, one of the buildings, a part of the Funk Institute. Um, just a little bit about these folks. So um, among them, they represent 38 uh, unique majors. Um, 36 of them uh, were double majoring um, last year. 31% um, were transfer students. Um, and 41 identified as a person of color. And 26% um, as first generation college students. Um, of course, they're much more than their numbers, and there's a lot of um, amazing passions and interests and experiences brought by this group. Um, but just to get a sense of um, our class of 2022 um, in both the conservation and the health. Here are some photos of what it looks like inside the classroom. So if you start at the design process in the upper left, this is um, you know, some ideation happening within our, the Fung Fellowship classroom. So all fellows have access to our classroom in Shires Hall with 24 hour access. It's a great space for meeting with your team, meeting with industry partners um, and um, collaborating. So within there, there's a lot of whiteboards, sticky notes, things to really um, be able to support the design process, prototyping materials. Um, photo of lab section, that's our whole classroom. Um, we do each year a final semester event. Um, we always include a prototyping fair within the fellowship experience to really get to show off your prototype to the community as well as to your peers and, and colleagues. Um, guest speakers are a 
big part of the fellowship experience. So bringing in um, folks really working in the areas that we are, um, that we're, that we're learning about and working with um, and really getting to hear from them what's important within their roles, within their impact and um, getting to also connect you all for with and build your network. Um, and then cross learning is also a big part of the fellowship with such diverse interests and skills. A lot of some of what you'll learn is really from your teammates, depending on what's the need of your project and how um, how you all can really um, learn from and support one another. Let me go back one. And here are some things that are happening outside the classroom space. Um, you know, some photos of our retreat up on Strawberry Hill. Um, we usually do a, um, a honors retreat that's offsite, um, different industry visits. This one in the center is us going to Hope Lab located in San Francisco. They do a lot of amazing health tech impact work, um, workshops, conferences, um, groups of hackathons, and of course, different networking experiences um, as well. Oop. Okay, so moving on to projects. Um, so we frame all of our projects as design challenges. So this is maybe a unique set framework to some of you and maybe old hat to others, um, but this is really an opportunity for, for students to really um, tackle a real world uh, challenge within, with, alongside industry or a community partner. So all of these projects really start with a how might we question. So this is really the challenge framework. How might we curb social isolation in older adults? How might we um, provide affordable, safe housing for, um, for, for veterans, for example? So we'll, I'll share some direct examples in a moment. Um, within your teams, you'll have access to mentors who are campus faculty. They might be an industry partner, community partner. They may be an honors fellow. Um, your teams will change within each of the projects. Um, so either four to eight fellows across all majors to really make sure you're working in an interdisciplinary team and getting that experience. Um, the solution you propose is really up to the team and it is really gonna be based on your research, ideation, and your testing. And then the timeline of the projects can really range. We'll have some short sprints and we'll have semester long projects as well. So a few example projects that we've had over the year, this is one of Christian's projects. And again, their how might we question was, how might we support medical staff when providing treatment to elderly patients and gauge dementia, patient autonomy, um, social needs and outpatient treatment. So here they're really partnering with uh, San Francisco Health Network. They were connected with a number of um, medical staff, um, caretakers um, and patients in order to really um, to work on this, on this challenge. Um, as you can see their solution, they actually built out a patient preference passport showing levels of comfort, communication, um, social medical treatment means, um, and created a volunteer system to be able to support that. So at the end of this project, Christian and his team passed off their, their, um, their app, all their user interviews to um, the San Francisco Health Network, and they are currently working on building that into their system. Um, Here's another project within the health track. Um, this was an honors project worked on last year. Um, they actually just got funding to continue their project into next year as well. And so they're really looking at how might we reduce anxiety, depression, suicide, substance abuse, and school absences amongst teenagers. And they're really focused on sleep. Um, and so they worked really closely with UCSF Innovation Ventures, um, developing a app, but as well as doing a lot of really research around um, what impacts sleep, how to really encourage sleep around in, within this population and partnering with different partners, as you can see below, um, to really um, create something that's both impactful and but that also has um, buy-in from, um, from teens as well as is well integrated within the medical system as well. 
So another one from the health track. So this was Yellen's project, um, again, with the frame of how might we make it easy for elderly individuals to access connected, comprehensive medical and social services in their own community. So again, this was app-based um, and this um, was partnered with the School of Public Health. You can see a bit of their process here. Um, this was a short project. So you can see that they did more lo-fi prototyping. They did some wireframing on the on the bottom really sketching out what would each of their screens look like as somebody moved through the innovation and what is the journey map what is the ideal what is one example of somebody coming into um, to this space and this innovation So within the conservation track, um, here is one of the challenges we had last year with Civic Design Studio. Um, so this how might we question was framed, how might we create an outdoor structure that promotes health and wellness, biodiversity and celebration of East Oakland history. So they built um, this model in SketchUp um, so you could actually walk through what their model was. Um, they did a lot of interviews with um, local residents as well as architects and um, master gardeners in the area to really see what was potential within this space. Um, we need to follow up with them of how, how that iteration is going as they were just supposed to be starting uh, work on that this summer. Um, Moving on towards application, again, these are just a brief sampling of some of the projects that were done. Um, in the health project, we had a few, um, we had a few hardware projects this past year, building an exoskeleton movable finger. We had in the conservation track, um, a group that worked um, with NOAA looking at sound waves and how the impact of mammals within different areas. So there's a huge, large range of projects. If you visit our website, we also have a full list of different partners that we've worked with, as well as some more in-depth examples of some of those different projects. Um, but while we close out, and then I really want to turn it over to you all, if you have any questions, is, um, is really the application. Um, so it's a pretty short application for those of you who haven't taken a look at it yet. Um, we like to say it should take about one to two hours maximum. Um, it's We're really looking for authentic answers. Um, so I think we've gotten some questions of what makes the ideal candidate. And I think the beautiful part of the fellowship is there's no one ideal candidate. We have our values on our Become a Fellow page of the things we're looking for. Um, folks who have a growth mindset, who take initiative, who are really passionate and who are really willing to bring the skills in this space. This is not a, uh, a traditional course. Um, and it also is a course where you really are working in teams. Um, and so really looking at what are what do you want to get out of this experience? And what do you really want to bring in and share with the community? And I think both of really highlighting both of those things um, will really make a strong application. So again, we're looking for class of 2024, class of 2023, um, Berkeley students, um, you can apply from any major um, and there is no GPA requirement. Um, we do ask it, I believe on the application, but it's more just um, for information. Um, and so they are open again. Again, I'll say the deadline is Friday, July, not 1 29th, that was a typo, July 29th um, at 11.59 p.m. So with that, I wanna open it up if there are any questions. And with that, James, I'm thinking we can probably stop the recording so then we can just have a conversation all together. 